I made a list of questions right here of things that I had before I went to ALS and now I'm going to answer them for you guys based off of my knowledge of completing ALS. Let's get started with question number one. How strict are inspections? Everybody gets like anxiety because of it because you're just like everything has to be perfect and amazing. This is true to an extent. You have your instructor which looks over you and then looks up at the next person and the next person and with that they might miss a thing or two. Usually they don't. Sometimes they might. Now, for instance, I knew someone that had gone through ALS prior to me. They had a blues inspection. His pants, how they're hemmed at the bottom, like they fold them in and they hem them. The hem came undone and so it was like folded out and like flapped out. So he folded it back up and put a staple in it. Went through his inspection and the instructor stands in front of you, looked both sides, looked his shoulders, everything, and then was like, all right, you're good, and stepped over to the next person didn't see the staple in his pants. Also, I know a kid that was in ALS with me and he had female stripes sewn onto his ABU jacket. Passed his ABU inspection without any demerits. We actually didn't even notice that he had female stripes on his uniform until the last week. Literally hysterical because for the first four weeks of class he had female stripes on his ABU jacket. That same guy, also had a women's belt for his blues. There is a slight difference between the belts. The material is different, you can tell. I don't know exactly what the AFIs are on that, but all the, the guys in our flight had the same belt, except for him, he had a women's belt, but it's very hard to tell. He didn't get hit for that or the stripes on his sleeves. Now that I'm mentioning all this, ALS instructors everywhere are probably gonna start looking for those things. So my advice to you guys is do not hope that you can get away with anything. If you think my uniform is a little faded, you might want to get a new one because you can fail the inspection outright. If they say your top and bottom, your pants and your top are too faded to be serviceable, it's an automatic fail. So my advice is before you go to ALS, just get new uniforms. Then you don't have to worry about whether or not they're super strict or anything on the inspections because you know, my uniform is tip top shape, so I gotta work. Question number two, I asked myself, what if I forget how to march? Uh, I was actually worried about that because I was like, I don't remember anything that I was supposed to do for marching. And the cool thing is, is that, don't worry, you're probably not gonna be the worst one in your flight. When we started marching the first week, everybody was off. Some of us were a little more awful than others. And then we went on through the weeks, week two, three, and then four, right before we have our inspections for march and drill. And some kids still fully didn't get it, but pretty much everyone else was like spot on. They knew exactly how to execute the commands, to call the commands. You learn it back. It's like riding a bike. So after a week or so, it comes right back to you. So you don't really have to worry about that one. Don't stress out about it. Just make sure that once you go, you actually are trying in practice and paying attention. That's the biggest thing. Question number three, I said, my shoes have a scuff. Is that okay? Now, I know most people going through ALS probably still have their low quarters from BMT. I was in that same situation. I went and bought new low quarters for like $85 because they rip you off. The pair that I bought was one of two pairs they had at the BX and it was the size that I needed, thankfully. Several other people in my flight that were like, crap, my shoes are scuffed. I don't have new ones. I can't go get them because they won't get here soon enough and I like put it off until now. And I don't think anybody in my flight got hit for scuffed shoes. So it's kind of hard to tell if they're scuffed because they don't actually get down and check. They just go like this. So if it's not noticeable from up here, you might be able to get away with it. But again, don't chance it. Uh, if you can get new shoes, I would. But if you can't and that is your only demerit, if it comes to that, then so be it. Honestly, don't think they hit the shoes too hard because literally I bought a brand new pair and after one day of using it, there's little slight rubs on the side because as soon as you touch a shoe to the other shoe, it puts a tiny scuff in it. So I don't think the instructors hit that hard because they know even if you got brand new ones, they'll probably be scuffed before you even walk into class that day. Now, if it's obviously worn and like the toes are all scuffed up and chewed up and it looks like your, your dog literally chewed on it, you might want to go get new shoes. Question number four I had is, can my uniform be a different color? Those of you in the Air Force know we have green and like gray or green and blue tops and green and gray or green and blue bottoms. That's okay. The instructors, at least at my ALS, said there is no AFI that says you can't have 
the two different manufacturers. You just have to have serviceable ABUs, which means like not torn or worn or uh, soiled. The next question is how is PT? PT was pretty easy for the most part. At least in my LS, we switched it up a lot. Every single week we did two PTs. So we would do one on Tuesday, then Wednesday would be uh, self PT. So you would go and run by yourself. Like you would get out of class and then everybody gets sent home, but they expect you on your free time to go to the gym or run or do something. So we did PT on Tuesday and Thursday and we always were doing something different. We would usually do circuit style stuff, but we would either go to like the football field and then one day we'd go to runner's world on the base and then another day we went to the PJ unit to do an exercise thing with them. And so we like bounced around and did a lot of stuff. So it doesn't really get stagnant while you're trying to work out. So I didn't think it was that bad, but again, it's mandatory PT, so overall it wasn't like the most fun thing. Question number six, how big are classes slash flights? Now, this is something that I was worried about because it was like, hey, we're gonna give you speeches, that's gonna suck because you gotta be in front of all these people. Turns out our class, which is the whole, is big. Ours was 96 people. Now, it's not always gonna be like that. It depends on what base you're at or how many people they have scheduled for ALS based on how many flights they have total. So ours was 96. So in that 96, they break it down into flights and we had six flights. It was 16 people per flight. So we took our flight into our flight room and it's just 16 of us. So when you do your speeches, it's just in front of those people, plus an instructor. How ironic is it that my next question is, how hard are the speeches? Now I know that's probably the scariest thing about going to ALS is you gotta do speeches. You gotta get up in front of people, you gotta talk, you gotta be professional, all this stuff. Speeches were honestly probably one of my favorite parts about ALS, which sounds weird. I mean, I, I'm kind of doing a speech right now, you know, but this is more like off the cuff. I just kind of say what I want. If I mess up, I just re-say it, and then I just edit out all the bad parts later. Now, I do have a little bit more experience with public speaking, but again, I'm also talking to a piece of plastic and metal in front of me with a little ring light. You know, it's not a human face that judges me the way I say something, or if I mess up, or if I stutter, or if I look weird, or if I'm like doing weird body movements as I'm talking, you know? It's like, and people do weird stuff too when they're like up there. It might be a little bit easier for me because I'm used to talking, and I kind of enjoy it, even though I don't really like I'm more of an introvert than an extrovert. That's why I do YouTube and not public speaking, you know what I'm saying? But overall, the speeches were actually really fun. And you talk in front of everybody and everything and then people give you feedback, but overall, they're not that hard. It, you have to do a three to five minute speech and then a five to seven minute speech. I actually got a perfect score on my five to seven minute long speech and I didn't get a perfect score. I missed one point on my three to five minute speech. I said, um, too many times in my speech for the three to five minutes. My five to seven minute speech didn't say a single um. I didn't mess up at all. I messed up like two words, but I corrected myself right away. And so he wasn't like gonna knock me down because you have to like mess up like three or more words or something to get a mark down. But it's like common for you to like slip up on a word and then like correct yourself. So there is some leeway on the scoring and as long as you put in an effort and it looks like you practice, which I practiced a ton so I could get a good score. So. The speeches aren't that hard, just make sure you practice. This next question is probably the most desired question you can ask about ALS. Kind of like people that ask about BMT. Those of you that are in the Air Force that are looking this up because you're gonna be going to ALS soon, how many people failed BMT? Not many, if any, that you know of. ALS is gonna be the same way. So it is a lot more strict than BMT. You know, you gotta be more professional, you gotta be more responsible. There's a lot more stuff that relies on you instead of BMT, it was kind of just like they held your hand through everything. Here they kind of do, but you're also on your own. So my class was 96 people, and 96 people graduated. Every single person graduated. It's actually rare for them to have someone completely fail out or get kicked out for not doing what they're supposed to. But like I said, that's super rare, so don't worry about it. You take the final test on a Friday, and we had several people fail. I think like 11 or 12 people fail out of the 96. Then, that following Monday, retake the test. So you got all weekend to study and they tell you what sections that you got your questions wrong because after you take the test, they take everybody into their flight rooms so of you and your 15 flight mates and they go over every single question of the test and they tell you the answer and they tell you what section it's in. And then you write down the ones that you got wrong and you go, I need to study section six more. And then you go home and you study section six a lot and then you study the other sections a little. And then you come back and retest on Monday and more than likely you're gonna pass. I believe when they came back and had that retest that Monday, I think like three people failed, maybe, or like one person. It was like a really small number. So then they had to do 
some review boards and then basically they go over your academic record so basically if you were not trying and that is clearly apparent they might not let you retest but if it's someone where they're like well they did good on their homework and they did good on this and they've been trying in class and the instructor's like yeah they're a good student i don't know what happened then they're gonna let you retest again so you retest for a third time and then that's when everyone passed and 96 of us graduated so it's not that hard. You aren't going to fail. If you actually care and you try, which I'm assuming those of you that watch these videos or watch my videos, I know you guys care because you're looking up information and you're trying to do the best you can, which is an awesome thing to do. And I applaud you guys for that. You guys won't fail. I promise. Question number nine is what if I want to get out of the Air Force? Now, this is a big thing that I get a lot. So those of you that are watching this that have asked me before, why are you going to this training? Why are you doing this? Why are you trying anymore if you're going to be getting out? Because it's a mandatory thing. So those of you that are in the Air Force already know, this is a mandatory thing if you make staff. If you test for staff and you make it, you have to go to ALS. So I have a year and a half left in the Air Force. I completed ALS one month ago and I still have a year and a half left. And I literally just sewed on staff. So I am a staff sergeant now in the Air Force. It is required to take the class before you put on staff sergeant. So I didn't have a choice. I had to go to that class because I made staff sergeant. As long as you have a sew on date before your separation date, you are required to go to ALS. And I don't know the exact rules on if you're gonna sew on like a year later but you like made it, they might still make you go even though you'll be out before you sew on. I don't know, sometimes the Air Force is really weird, but for the most part, just expect to go because pretty much everyone does if you sign a six year contract. My next question is, what if you don't bleed blue? This is a big question for me because I've already decided I want out of the Air Force. I, I don't want to stay in anymore. I don't want to do 20 years, but I was getting promoted and I had to go to this class, but I don't feel like I bleed blue. Now the cool thing about the, in this class is in the very first week, we gotta stand up, talk a little bit about ourselves, tell why we joined the Air Force, what we wanted out of the Air Force, and then they had a time continuum thing that was aligned and it said low commitment, high commitment. And then they had another one that said professionalism, like high and low for professionalism. So everyone got to go up and mark on the board where they thought they were on this continuum. So I went up and I was one of the last people to talk. And when I went up there, everyone else had their markings all over. Pretty much everybody had theirs halfway up or higher. And some, like the professionalism thing, people were kind of like one or the other. So very few people feel like they're like in the middle. They're like, oh, I'm like really professional or I'm like, oh, I'm not professional at all. But this is cool because ALS lets you be yourself. It lets you express who you are as an airman and have that individuality a little bit. So you kind of get to explain yourself and show everyone else where you're at. So when I was in there, on this board, I wrote my commitment, I put it literally on the very end, the bottom, because I was like, I'm 100% getting out. There's nothing that will make me stay in the Air Force. And I put, I literally marked it, and the instructor was like, uh oh. He was like, interesting. I don't think that, that many people mark it on the bottom end, almost ever. Because literally, like, our whole class was, like, on the right side. They were like, yeah, I'm pretty high commitment. And they're like, yeah, I've had some bad times, but lately it's been great. And I'm planning on re-enlisting. But I was like, I'm not at all. So it was cool because you kind of got to explain yourself, but, like, in a really professional way. And it was just like, yeah, I have, like, no commitment anymore. I'm, I know what I want, and it's not to be in anymore. So I've already shut down the fact that I'm not going to re-enlist, and I'm okay with that. I literally said, like, I don't bleed blue, like, at all. It was actually, like, really cool and, like, relieving because you could be who you are and you could be honest. And I showed up and I did all the homework. I did everything I was supposed to, but I'm not doing this because I wanna be in for 30 years and I love the Air Force. I'm doing this because I have a certain work ethic that I've grown up with and it's just the way that I am, is when I have to do something, I do it. And I do it the best I can. Right now I'm in a contract, so I have a year and a half left. I'm gonna do my job, I'm gonna do it the best I can. And then when I get out, I'm gonna do whatever else I want the best I can but I don't just give up on my commitment. I marked it as low commitment, but that doesn't mean that I'm not trying. So even though I didn't bleed blue, I actually enjoyed ALS. My next question is how long is a typical day in ALS? Now we were required to be in our classroom 
by 7 o'clock every single morning and class did not start until 7 30 but we had to be in class at 7. the instructor would show up to the room at 7 30. then we would get out of school around 1500 which was 3 p.m and then from there we would either have pt on tuesdays and thursdays or we would get to go home but there was some times when we had to do some cleanup stuff so they let you out at 1500 and then you would like clean up this room and that room and if whatever your little extra added responsibility was, you would do that and then you guys would all just break off and go home. But that's not when your day actually ends because, especially the first week, as soon as you get home, you have a reading to do. A lot of reading, like the first day, like 80 pages. You can expect to come home, maybe shower, get into some comfy clothes, sit down, read for four hours, eat some dinner, read for another four hours, and then make your way to bed. The first week, kind of going to go something like that. So you're going to be at school from 07 to 1500. Actually, I'm pretty sure it was 1600. That's how long we were supposed to be there. I said 1500. That was my bad. You're there till 4 p.m. So from 07 until 4 p.m., you are going to be there, which is a total of nine hours. But then you gotta drive home, and then you gotta have homework, you gotta do much stuff, you gotta contact all your flight mates and exchange homework and a bunch of fun stuff. So realistically, I would say on average, every single day, you're gonna be looking to spend 15 hours doing ALS stuff. It's gonna be a lot and really time consuming. But just know that everyone makes it through it as long as you do what you're supposed to. Which it sucks that you have to do all that, but I mean, it's possible, everyone else has done it, you can too. My next question is probably one of my favorite questions, and it is, what part was the hardest of ALS? Honestly, in my opinion, the hardest thing is dealing with certain types of people that don't care. That's like the hardest thing for me, is being around someone that doesn't care. Like on that time continuum, I was like, I don't have much commitment because I know I'm getting out and I'm okay with that. There were people there that said, I'm going to do 20 years, but they don't try. They don't care. They don't do anything. And you're like, I'm going to lose my mind, you know? So that, in my opinion, is the hardest part about ALS is being there, but not wanting to be in the Air Force longer you have to, but being there and trying. And then there's people there that say they want to stay in, but they show zero effort or care for what they're doing. And that is the hardest thing to deal with and my last question is is ALS fun well I think from answering this you guys can tell that I didn't really mind ALS I actually had fun I enjoyed it I actually like more people in my ALS flight than I do in work so I actually enjoyed being there with those people they're some of the most fun people I've met in my whole Air Force career and it was really cool getting to know all of them because they were from all these different backgrounds all these different jobs everything it was super cool and I really did enjoy it and I was really dreading it beforehand but then after the experience I was like yeah that was a lot of work but that was also a lot of fun it's like that saying you always hear all the time it's like work hard play hard that's exactly how ALS was we worked really really hard and then on the weekends we would all get together and hang out and we would just have fun and it was super awesome and it was a great group of people that I got to be with so overall I would say ALS is a blast if you put in an effort and the people that you're with put in the same effort that you're putting in you guys can have a really, really fun time. That concludes my video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you appreciated this content because uh, these are the questions that I have for myself and hopefully there's some of the questions that you guys have for yourself also. I look forward to seeing you guys in another video, so click subscribe and I will see you later. Peace out.